I used to be so hard on myself and not that I'm not anymore, but I just have a different kind of respect for what I do. Welcome to It's All a Dream with me, Nathan. Today I'm joined by Mia. Mia, if you want to introduce yourself, let the people know who you are and what it is you do. Yeah, so my name is Maya Castaneda. I am from Texas in the United States. Um, kind of grew up all around Texas, traveled there for a while. Now I am currently in Mexico playing professional basketball and I'm excited to tell you guys a little bit about, you know, how I got here. That's amazing. So was uh, being an athlete uh, always your dream? Was it always on the radar? I think so, yes. I, rem I have very early memories of uh, playing softball and soccer, um, you know, at the ages of like four or five years old. Um, so I kind of knew an athlete, but I didn't know basketball quite yet. I actually didn't get introduced to basketball until I was seven. Okay. So what would you say inspired you to become a professional basketball player? I... It was the only place my mom let me go unsupervised. So that was my kind of like getaway place, my therapy. Um, when I did finally get introduced to basketball, my parents had got a divorce. And so there was a lot of stuff going on at home. So when I wanted to get away, I would go to the gym. Um, and it just kind of was my distraction. And I ended up finding out I was kind of good at it. And people told me I was really good at it. And I just kept practicing. So I ended up falling in love with it. Did you uh, do it much at like high school or anything like that? Yeah, so I played it all four years on uh, the varsity team in high school. Um, and then I went to college and played all four years in college as well. So my college story is a little crazy there, but I uh, played all four years in college. And then COVID kind of put a little stop to it, made things a little hard. Um, I didn't think that I was actually going to get to become a professional because COVID hit right at the time when I was graduating and I didn't really know where it was going to go from there. Um, but, you know, it ended up working itself out and now I ended up getting to do what I wanted to do. No, that's really cool. I'm glad because uh, I know COVID put Spanner in the works for a lot of people, you know, so it's cool yeah. to hear that you overcome it, especially being that it would have been, what, two years maybe out of your career. Yeah. So yes. I can imagine that was quite scary to be able to like bounce back <laughs> to where you have today. So right. um, you said you were seven when you found the love for basketball. How old would you say you was when you see it as a career? Um, probably around my freshman year of high school. So about the age of like 14, 15 years old. Um, I... Me and my brother and my sister have a really, were really close in age, and I was kind of setting in that my mom was going to have to pay for college for all three of us back to back to back. So I was like, you know, yeah. let me try and get a scholarship for this, and I can go play in college. And then once that happened, you know, I was playing in college, and it became more realistic that going professional was actually very obtainable for me. So um, I would say that around 14, 15 years old is when I decided, okay, this is what I want to do. I'm going to use basketball because my dream was really ultimately to travel the world, um, just travel, make an impact on people. I didn't really know how exactly that was going to look, but I love to travel. So um, once I got old enough, I was like, you know what, I'm going to use basketball to travel as much as I possibly can. And it's done exactly that this far. <laughs> I was going to say, especially with um, the Harlem Globetrotters, that must be quite yes. cool being able to see the places that you've seen with that, you know. And being, yeah. you got to be, what, one of the first females in the team too, right? There's not many. Actually, there, there has not been many, but um, the first one was actually in 1986. So they do go back pretty far. Um, people okay. don't really know that, but um, they've just kind of been scattered here and there when they can find people to, you know, find women who actually want to stick with it and, you know, make a career out of it. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it must be quite cool because they're, they are iconic in themselves, right? So to be able to say that you are now one of them must be insanely cool. And they're, they're going to be one of the only teams that really do like world tours. Right. 
So that must be quite cool that you get to tick both of those boxes too. Yeah, it's, you know, really, it really is a dream come true. I never thought I would do the Harlem Globetrotters. Matter of fact, whenever they asked me, you know, to go try out, it's like, there's no way I'm going to do that. Like, that's not really who I am or, you know, the kind of basketball I like to play. I'm a very competitive person. And I was like, there's no way that's going to happen. Um, but I'm very glad that I did it. And it turned out to be one of the best experiences that I've ever got to be a part of. No, that's really cool. I'm glad to hear. So what would you say really um, inspired you to kind of pursue basketball? Um, I think it, my inspiration really came from my family. Um, they, my mom and my dad sacrificed so much to be able to get me to do what I wanted to do, you know, go to the different tournaments and, you know, travel from here to there at such a young age. So once I became older, I, you know, didn't want all of that to necessarily go to waste. Not saying that people who don't make, make it professional go yeah. to waste, but for me, my inspiration was I want to be able to pay them back for what they were able to give me. It was such a happy time of my childhood. All of my best friends came from, you know, sports and even into my adult years, all of my friends and closest mentors have been through sports. Um, so it was really just an inspiration to be able to give back to those and that they could see that their sacrifice paid off in some way. Yeah, absolutely. So just touch on where you mentioned like mentors there and like your parents, who would you say to me your idols was? Um, I mean, I know for me personally, although I don't do anything to do with like basketball or sport, Michael Jordan was always a huge like idol to me because it was more of his mentality of like, right. it was always such a personal thing, but he always tried to better himself, you know? Um, and he'd leave, he'd leave it all on the court. He'd give it his greatest every night. So that just kind of like was a attitude that was like inspirational to me. So who was mm -hmm. some of your idols? Um, at a very, when I first got into it, it was uh, Derek Rose, just because he overcame so much adversity, you know, with his injuries and he came out and was amazing and then injury after injury and he still continued to be you know somewhat of a very big impact to the game so I just really enjoyed his story um in my professional years I'd probably say Kobe Bryant though like he his mentality the way that he and even you know his personal story uh some of the things that he had to overcome with his family uh to realize you know basketball sometimes isn't everything you know you have to put your priorities in check so um Kobe Bryant definitely for sure too no, that's cool. Yeah. I mean, he again, like Michael Jordan, he had a great mentality for the game, you know. And lo I love hearing those sort of stories. I love hearing how they then inspire people like yourself and millions of others across the world. Right. Um. So you've achieved great success with what you've done. You know, you've like managed to achieve joining the Harlem Glo Globetrotters. You've managed to achieve traveling and even just getting your scholarship through basketball and stuff right so how would you say you've achieved this success what would you say was the uh the tip definitely just having support um I think that's the number one thing is you have a couple of people who truly believe in you and they're always feeding you you know that special you know you can do this and hearing those encouraging words from you know the time even off the court, but even when you step on the court, let's say through bad games, through bad seasons, and they constantly support you. Um, that's probably been the biggest thing that helped me achieve it. Um, but second is just really, you know, being determined and having your why, you know, my family is my why and my family pushes me to do, you know, amazing things. And the fact that make them proud, uh, no matter what I do is like, that encourages me the most. And then, you know, of course the little things, you know, practice, practice makes perfect and, you know, all those kinds of things. But late, lately in life, I've just really enjoyed, you know, getting to do it at this level. It's amazing. And my mindset has truly changed that when you enjoy it and it's truly not your job and it's your passion, you can do whatever you want in this life. Like, and that can go, you know, with work or, you know, sports and school, literally anything. If you enjoy it, like you're going to be good at whatever you want to do. Absolutely. I've always said that you can, um, you can always teach any skill, but you can't teach passion. So, yeah. and I think if you're passionate about something, you, you want to learn the craft and you want to learn every ounce of it. Do you know what I mean? 
you want to learn all those like behind the scenes and because you just study it without even acknowledging that you're studying mm -hmm. and that so yeah I definitely think passion is going to be one of the top keys for anybody listening that like that's the key be passionate about something and you'll you'll be able to achieve it greater yes um, and I I used to be so hard on myself and not that I'm not anymore but I just have a different kind of respect for what I do and I think that goes a long way like I could maybe have a bad game, but the fact that I'm in another country, literally living here for a few months, getting paid to do what I love, like that kind of takes away from the fact that, oh, we might have lost a game, you know? So it's it's just one of those things where it's a different kind of respect for life itself and not so much exactly the sport. Yeah, sure. I, and just on that, what you said about losing a game and it can be almost like a knockback, you must have had knockbacks in your in your time so far, whether that be either losses of games, maybe a potential injury, or even um, like a knockback from a team that you applied for. Um, mm -hmm. How would you say that you kind of overcome them? Because sometimes you get those knockbacks. And when you hear them either so often or you hear it even once, it can knock people away from wanting to then continue pursuing that. So how would you say you've overcome any of those knockbacks? Yeah, so my third year of college, I went to Texas Tech University, which is a you know really big, very well-known school. And so it was uh, very exciting to be a part of that. But when I got there, um, my first few games, I played a lot of minutes and then it went from literally 100 to zero. So I was playing and then all of a sudden not playing and I did not know how to handle that. That was, you know, something I had never had to go through like I was always one of the main pieces of a team so to be on a team where I was sitting the bench and I just had to be a good teammate um I think being able to overcome that was just knowing that I, I as a person was more than basketball so I had to feel you know yes I was so passionate about it and I did never once did my love you know fade away from the game I still loved it um but I had to realize that there are some things that are bigger than basketball and that's okay. Like it was okay for that to happen. And so it, you know, took away the stress from basketball and I did it and I just had fun with it. Um, so then I went to my other college and I had to, you know, kind of build my call, my confidence back up, you know, find some other things, but it was just having fun with it. So I think if you can not be so serious sometimes and truly just love it, um, you'll be able to get through, you know, any kind of adversity that you face. Yeah, so I think you've just got to remember why you started it, you know, how you mentioned earlier about you have your why. And mm -hmm. I think that's it, you know, you're going to get these knockbacks and you're going to think, all right, why did I even pick up the basketball in the first place? Because I loved it. It was my escape and stuff like that. And I think once you shift back from that, like, career or something mindset, you know, and you shift back to, like, because I love it, I think that's yeah. when it kind of gets easier to accept those no's. Yeah, you kind of, you know, when you love somebody, you know, we can change it even with personal relationships. When you love somebody, you can almost go through anything. You'd be like, okay, well, yes, you get on my nerves and I'm mad at you right mm -hmm. now, but I love you. So tomorrow we're going to try again, you know? So it's just kind of the same thing. It was one of those things where it's like, okay, well, we're not on the best terms right now, but I love you. So I'm going to keep on going through this and we're going to figure it out. Yeah, definitely. So what would you say has been your proudest moment or even a moment where you've kind of been like, is this real? Am I dreaming right now? Where like it could be running out of the tunnel to like a packed out stadium. It could be a practice wearing or seeing your jersey with your name on it for the first time. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, I've been playing forever, so I have so many, but um, definitely the, the thing that probably sticks out the most is with the Harlem Globetrotters uh, signing my first jersey. Uh, when I had somebody who came up, you know, with my jersey on and my name on the back, like it was the coolest thing ever. It was a little girl and she was just super excited that, you know, for her, she was so amazed that she was talking to me. And I, on the other hand, was just as amazed that she was wearing my jersey. So it was like, she's like, can I have a picture with you? Know, like, no, I want a picture with you. You know, it was one of those things that was just um, I'll never forget that moment. So it was really, really cool. But yeah, running out of the tunnel, no matter where I am with the Harlem Globetrotters here in Mexico, like that never gets old. Like I truly feel like I'm living a dream every time I run out of the tunnel or my name gets called. So that's also a really special thing to me. Yeah. 
that's beautiful I'm really glad to hear that it, it still means so much as well you know because I think sometimes yeah. it can it can almost not necessarily wear off but you can kind of get used to it so I'm really glad that like you still get that that feeling and that motivation to go out when you when you hear your name you know it gets you fired up um and then last question really is um to anybody watching or listening that wanted to follow in your footsteps of becoming a professional athlete um or, or even basketball player um not necessarily just for the Harlem Globetrotters but for any divisional field or team uh what advice would you offer to them I would just say, uh, believe in yourself, you know, self-confidence is probably one of the biggest things. If sometimes there's teammates and there's coaches and teams that may not necessarily be your fit and that's okay. Like you just can't get discouraged in those moments. Um, you have to keep pursuing your dream. If that's what you want, literally give everything that you have to make that work and somewhere it's going to happen for you. Um, the other big piece of advice is don't be scared to network. Like anywhere you go, meet people. You never know how those people could help you later on down the way. Like I have met so many people and I, when I was younger, I was shy and I didn't want to talk to anybody. My mom would always tell me, you know, you need to go talk to them. And I'm like, why? I don't know them. Like there's no point for me to talk to them. And uh, as I got older, you know, slowly but surely I started doing that. And those were the people that I would meet, you know, here and there. And they'd call me at one time be like, Hey, there's this big tournament coming on. There's going to be a lot of scouts here. Do you want to come? Like if you make an impact on people outside of what you want to do, those people will always remember you. So I think that's probably the biggest piece of advice that I can give is just make your impact um, outside of your passion. I couldn't agree more to honestly. I mean, myself, I was a very like shy child. Didn't want to speak to no one. I'm still a little bit like that now, but <laughs> One of the main things I've had, I've learned is networking, like talk to those people, make an impression. And I mean, that's done me wonders for my my career, you know, and that like starting this podcast, when I, when I first started it, I sent out like 20 text messages. It's like, hey guys, like doing a podcast, do you want to jump on? And all of them was like, yeah, absolutely. And I thought, okay, that's not too bad. Like I'm quite impressed by that, you know. <laughs> random <laughs> random fields of people so it was quite cool to be able to see what networking can do right you know because I mean some of these people I hadn't spoke to in years but we were still always on good terms so um yeah I'm glad that you touched on how networking is important especially even in like your field like we right. work in two different fields but it's still just as important oh yeah it's amazing the basketball world you know it's literally a worldwide sport and when the first time I came out to Mexico, I was surprised by how many people I actually knew who were playing out here. I was like, we are in a whole nother country. And I still know people who are playing basketball. And it's funny because we don't always all speak the same language. Like sometimes we got to figure it out. But I think it's so cool that basketball itself is its own language and you can figure that out. So that's like been the coolest thing to experience. No, that's cool. Well, if you just want to um, like drop here instagram handles and like twitter and anything like that so people can stay connected with you follow you see your story um feel free to drop them now yeah okay so my most of my handles are the same on everything um it's at just j-u-s-t underscore m-i-a the number 20 and that's all across platforms instagram twitter and facebook perfect that's great well i really appreciate you jumping on today um it's been a pleasure to talk to you so thank you Thank you for tuning into this episode of It Was All A Dream. We appreciate your time and support. We hope that you enjoyed the episode and you feel inspired to achieve your dreams. Be sure to give us a follow on social media. We're on Instagram, TikTok, YouTube and Twitter where you can contact us and stay connected with us if you have any feedback on the episodes or guest recommendations. Be sure to stick around after this to see what's upcoming in the next episode. Thank you. But um, I think here we're talking about stunts and... Um... I've been a member of the British Stunt Register since 1993, would you believe? Amazing. Um, and uh, I'm a stunt coordinator now, but um, I still, I, you know, I still occasionally get called to perform stunts as well. But I spent many years performing stunts and um, yeah, now, now do a little of both. Yeah. <laughs>